There's nothing like being the first boat out on the water, heading out for a day of fun with friends or family. Trailering gives us an added bit of freedom, offering a bigger slice of paradise. It might be just down the road a piece, or it could be all the way across our great nation. There's no great secret to trailering. It requires a little training and practice, some attention to details, and a fair share of common sense. First of all, make sure that you have the right hitch and ball. Your dealer can advise you on the proper equipment and towing capacity you'll need for your tracker boat and trailer, including the right ball size for your rig. If you have a removable drawbar, make sure that the lock pin is in place, and while you're down here, make sure that the nut on the bottom of the ball is tight. Some trailers are equipped with a swing-away tongue to allow it to fit in a garage better. If your trailer is equipped with a swing-away tongue, now's the time to swing it into place, lock it, and pin it. Once everything is in place, simply lower the tongue with the jack until all the weight is on the ball. Sometimes the coupler doesn't slip easily over the ball, so you may have to wiggle it a little to make sure it's properly seated. Then lock the coupler, insert the locking pin, and hook up the lights and safety cables. Raise the jack until it's off the ground, Swing the wheel back to the trailering position and make sure it's locked into place. It's a good idea to have the dolly wheel point aft toward the back of the boat. Less chance of catching or snagging. You should create your own checklist to use before heading out to the water. At least these items should be included. Ball and coupler tight? Check. Trailer wiring connected and all lights working? Check. Coupler locked and pinned? Check. Safety cables or chains? Check. Trailer jack up and locked in place? Check. Tire pressure? Check. Bearings greased? Check. Lug nuts tight? Check. Transom saver? But if you have no transom saver, verify lower unit ground clearance. Check. Front and rear tie down secure? Check. <laughs> Boat key? Check. Lastly, before you head out, Make sure all your gear is stowed properly so it won't blow out. This includes making sure the bimini top, if you have one, is inside its cover and secured in a low or trailering position. Okay, now we're ready to head out. If you decided you need gas, now's the time to plan a stop along the way. It's best if you can choose a place where you can always pull ahead and not have to back up. Watch your clearance as you pull up to the pump. Use those rear view mirrors. Consult your owner's manual for the proper fuel octane for your engine. Never use a fuel that contains more than 10% ethanol. Higher levels can dissolve internal components in some marine engines and can void your warranty. Once you have determined the correct fuel, common sense comes into play again. Make sure the car engine is off, trailer lights are off, and no one is smoking nearby. Then open your fuel cap. Make sure it's the fuel cap, not a filler for water or oil, and insert the nozzle. Be sure the nozzle is in contact with the filler tube before pumping gas. This will eliminate the possibility of static sparks. It's best to fill the tank slowly and never leave the filling unattended, as overfilling or spills can occur. If your boat has a portable tank, always remove the tank and place it on the ground. This eliminates the possibility of a static spark. Never overfill the tank. Always leave an inch or so at the top for expansion. Make sure you tighten the vent on the fuel cap to prevent any spillage while traveling. All right, everybody ready? Let's head to the ramp. Now we get into highway driving. Here are a few more tips to help you along. The first thing you'll notice is that your vehicle accelerates a lot slower. You've just added several thousand pounds to your rig, and that takes a little getting used to. When passing other vehicles, be sure to allow lots of extra room. Your rig is now much longer than you're used to. Give it plenty of space. Use your mirrors, and use your turn signals to signal other drivers. Nice and smooth with the steering wheel. Sudden or sharp moves can cause the trailer to whip, which could lead to loss of control. 
it's a good idea to stop occasionally and check both your tires and your bearings. While both tires and bearings will normally be warm to the touch, they should not be hot. Ouch! Excessive heat means something's wrong. Have it checked at the nearest service center before continuing on your journey. Remember what I said about a little training and practice? Here's a guy that needs lots of practice. A crowded ramp is not the place for this. If you're not sure of your ability, find a vacant parking lot, get an observer, and set up some cones to practice with. You'll learn that you have to swing wider than usual for your trailer to clear curbs, obstacles, and pedestrians. Practice until you're comfortable with it. Ready to try backing up? Here's a trick that'll help get you started. Place a small piece of tape on the bottom of the steering wheel. As you begin to back up, move the tape in the direction you want the trailer to go. Small moves at first, nice and slow. You'll have to get used to using your mirrors as your rear vision is partially blocked by the boat. Watch your observer and follow his instructions. If you hear him scream, stop, you've probably done something wrong. Practice until you're comfortable. In the process, you'll also get a feel for the effect of the added weight, both in stopping distance and acceleration. Now we're practiced, fueled, and ready for the launch ramp. Never block a ramp while you're preparing your boat for launch. It's discourteous to others. Here's that common sense thing again. Let's call it ramp etiquette. Always pull to the side. There's usually a staging lane designated for you to use while you're getting ready. While prepping for launch, get in the habit of doing things the same way every time. Walk towards the trailer, disconnect the trailer lights, release the front tie down, but not the winch strap. The front tie down is either a short chain or strap that's attached to the trailer and is there as a backup safety to the winch. Release the aft tie downs and remove and stow the transom saver. Releasing the winch cable at the top of the ramp could cause your boat to part company with the trailer on a steep ramp. Very embarrassing and could cause lots of damage and delays. Prep a long dock line to avoid that embarrassing swim when your boat sails off on its own. If you're launching by yourself, attach a bow line that's at least twice the length of the boat to the bow and tie or loop the other end to the trailer winch stand. It may also work to tie to the dock, just give yourself plenty of slack. If your trailer is equipped with surge brakes with a backup release, you may have to leave the wiring hooked up so the electronic release will let you back up. If your trailer wiring has this system, it will have a five pin mail plug to attach to the vehicle's plug. Some trailers only have a manual release. Now's the time to release the brakes so you can back to the ramp. Okay, ready? The lane is clear, it's your turn. So let's get to it. Think about ramp etiquette. If the ramp has more than one launch lane, be sure to line up on just one side to keep the others free. Always try to line up straight with the ramp because it's easier to back in a straight line. Have your launch partner guide you back. Turn off your radio dummy and roll down the window so you can hear him. When all is good and you're close to the water, stop and let your partner in the boat. Then continue backing until you're far enough in to back the boat off. The fenders just underwater is usually pretty close to the right spot. Place the vehicle in park, set the parking brake, and get out. Here, a knowledgeable boater has a wheel chalk handy to put behind the tire. The chalking becomes more important if you're working with a standard transmission since there's no park. This is the time to go through the before starting procedure. Refer to chapter four for correct starting procedures if you have not already done so. Now your partner lowers the engine and starts it, letting it warm up briefly, being very careful not to over rev. Now you can release the winch cable and watch as your partner gently backs off the trailer and away from the ramp. If you're by yourself, try to minimize the time on the ramp if anyone is waiting to launch behind you. This is when you back in, use the bow line to guide your boat to the dock or beach, and return to your vehicle as quickly as possible. Then move to a designated parking area. Now is a good time for an inspection of your trailer. Make sure the bunks are free of any damage to the carpet or structure. There should be no holes, torn carpet, or screws or bolts protruding that could damage your hull. When you're ready to reload, Back down until the bunks are all the way underwater, 
Then pull forward until the water is about halfway up the bunks. This wetting procedure will make it easier for the boat to slide up the bunks. Steeper or shallower ramps may require slightly different procedures. Follow the same steps as when launching. Shift into park, set your parking brake, and shock a wheel. Approach the trailer slowly, trying to make sure the bow is centered between the bunks. Tilt the motor up slowly to avoid contact with the lower unit and the ramp. Slowly increase power until the boat makes contact with the stop on the trailer winch. Again, having someone to guide you is a big help. Reduce power immediately upon reaching the stop. Too much power or speed here could cause the boat to jump the stand, causing damage. Some ramps prohibit power loading. Be sure to check the signs and warnings at each ramp you use. If there is a sign prohibiting power loading, you'll have to cut the engine as soon as you make contact with the bunks. Tilt the engine up and hand winch the boat to the stop or roller. Make sure the ratchet lock on the winch is engaged and the cable or strap is not freewheeling. A spinning handle can do lots of bone crunching damage. If you have a larger boat, it might be a good idea to invest in a power winch. Consult your tracker dealer for details. Once fully on the trailer, double check that the ratchet lock on the winch is set and attach the bow tie down. Be sure your engine is tilted up before pulling up the ramp. Failure to do so could cause the unit to drag the ramp, causing major damage. Retrieve your chalk, put the vehicle in low or first gear, and release the parking brake. Then you can pull slowly up the ramp. Check in your mirrors to see that the boat is centered on the trailer. If it is not centered, back it into the water again and reload until it is. Never trailer a boat that is not centered on the bunks. If all is in order, now you can move the rig back into the staging area to keep from blocking the ramp for others. Most ramps provide this area so you can prepare your rig for towing to your next destination. Again, place your shifter in park and apply the parking brake. If you're on a slope, place a chalk on the downhill side of a wheel. Begin by preparing the boat for trailering. All gear should be stowed in a latched or locked compartments and the bimini top covered and lowered to its trailering position. Remember Murphy's Law, Anything that can blow out, will blow out. Begin at the rear of the boat. Replace the tie-down straps and motor transom saver. Move forward and check the winch to be sure the boat is against the roller or stop and the ratchet lock is engaged. Check the bow tie-down, reconnect the trailer lights and double check that the coupler is secure to the hitch and the lock pin has not been removed. One final check to be sure the trailer lights are working properly and we're almost ready to go. What about those weeds on the trailer? Spreading of water weeds and other aquatic life is a serious problem. Be sure you know all the local and state regulations for cleaning your boat before launching in another lake. Failure to do so can result in a ticket and a stiff fine. It's common sense. No one wants to be responsible for contaminating a clean body of water. boy. Well, you've made it home safely, but the work's not quite finished. You'll want to be sure that the lockers are free of any food items that might spoil or attract critters while the boat is being stored. Finding a smelly science experiment or a colony of ants next time you go out can spoil your day. Also, remove any wet towels or items that might mildew. Next, especially if you've been in salt water, wash the boat with fresh water, paying special attention to the engine and trailer. Key areas on the trailer are wheels and brakes, springs and fittings, as these are especially vulnerable to salt damage. Your outboard may have a flush fitting on it to flush out the salt water. Before storing your rig inside or installing the cover, the boat should be allowed to air dry or towel dry to prevent mildew. Inside storage is always preferable. If the boat must be stored outside, be sure to cover it and chalk the wheels, 